Indigenous Peoples in Canada. Hey guys, today we came all the way to the Museum of Anthropology, where we're going to try and see if we can find my friend Stefan, and we're going to learn all about indigenous people in Canada. Now, indigenous people means people who lived here long before the Canadians did. We're going to see lots of things that maybe they left behind, uh, pieces of art or uh, uh, boats or other things that they made uh, that maybe tell us a little bit about what kind of life that they had a long long time ago. So we're gonna see some cool things and we're gonna learn a little bit. So come on, let's go see if we can find Stefan. Today we are talking about people from a long time ago, but many of those indigenous peoples are still around now. Many still remember their old traditions and can perform a song or dance. You can find people from different indigenous cultures all over Canada, like the Haida, the Métis, and the Inuit. You can see lots of statues and paintings from them too, all over the place. Like this rock statue called an Inukshuk. Inukshuk. I think we're here at the museum. Now we won't be able to go inside, but uh, we can see what's around here anyway. Hey, it's Stefan. Hey, hey Stefan. Hi. How's it going? Great. Yeah, what's this? Let's see. Wait. This isn't English. I can't read this. Well, we've got English down here. Oh, yeah. But the indigenous peoples of Canada have their own written language. It kind of looks like English. Like, I can see an X. It's a I little bit. I can see a... Wait, is that an upside down E? It's a bit like English, but I think the pronunciation is completely different. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's very interesting that they show uh, how the indigenous people spoke as well as how we speak. Well, they didn't have a written language for a very, very long time. It's only in the last hundred years that we've been able to give them a text in order to put their spoken word into text. Whoa, it, what do you mean they didn't have a written language? What if they wanted to write a note or something to their friend? What if they wanted to write something down? They never had a text-based language, so they could only communicate orally. Like just talking to each other? Just talking to each other, just huh. sharing stories. So if someone lived really far away, how did they get the message to them? Well, they just call them on their phone or what? One person would go and tell a story to another person and that person may travel and tell it again. Oh, so they have to do it in person. They have to do it in person. And the way that they memorized longer messages was turning ideas into stories and telling them as stories. Oh, so they tell a lot of stories instead of writing books. Instead of writing books, they told stories. We've now given them a language in order to historically preserve their culture. Wow, that's cool. All right, well, uh, why don't we head down to the museum and see what we can see? Sure, let's go. Let's go. Because they didn't have roads or cars or cell phones a long time ago, the indigenous people were very good at making things with wood, hunting for fish and meat, and making boats to sail in the water. That's why you can always see animals in their art, because they were always very close to nature. Hey look, we found a totem pole! Ah, it's big. Now, what have we got on there? Totem poles usually tell stories of ancestors and legends. Hey, like the stories you said before. Yeah, like the stories. Um, you can see animals carved into these ones, for yeah. example. What is that? This is probably a frog. Yeah, probably, yeah. This might be a wolf or an eagle or something. We're not exactly sure what all the animals are. 
Yeah, these are really, really old, right? They made them a long, long time ago, so these, we don't know exactly. These used to actually be very colorful and very painted, but as time goes on, the paint falls off. There's a bird up there. Yeah, it looks like a raven at the very top. Just a bunch of animals on top of each other. Wow. Where do you think they would put these? Uh, they would usually put them in areas that were very important to them. Maybe mm. places where ancestors used to live or important animal areas. You see the museum here showed us some pictures of what it might have looked like a long, long time ago. You see so, so many houses, totem poles, boats for fishing. There's a whole village. The indigenous peoples of Canada never had an actual word, Canada, to describe their home. When Europeans first got here, they asked, what is this place? The indigenous folks pointed to their villages and said, those are Canada. Canada means village in the Iroquois language. And now it's the name of our country. All right, well, we saw lots of cool stuff. Uh, thanks, Stefan, for uh, being our guide today. No, happy to be here. That's great. Um, so uh, I guess I'll see you around, and uh, maybe next time we can see some other cool things like uh, Nookshook or something like that. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right. Bye. Bye. See ya.